tips for clothing and shoes. Um, nothing that wrinkles. <laughs> Definitely nothing that wrinkles. Everything gets dirty really fast. I mean, it's all covered in smog and dirt. There's trash everywhere. There's dog poop everywhere. And dogs everywhere. I got so many holes in skirts from dogs biting my skirts and whatever. So just... I mean, don't waste all your money trying to buy beautiful outfits because they're, it's all going to get ruined. Everything I had, I trashed. Everything. Oh, yeah. Shoes are so important. So I'm going to just show you. This is what the little missionary book... Can yeah, you see that? Bit. Okay. There you go. This is what your missionary like pamphlet or whatever that you got in the mail says that you should buy. That is the biggest lie in the whole world. Do not buy that. My mission president's wife was like so mad that they would tell sisters to buy that stuff because you will literally die. I would say, wow, so many sisters got sent home for having problems with their knees and hips and backs because of the shoes that they had brought. So you need to get durable shoes with inserts. I used good feet inserts. They're really expensive, but they absolutely saved me. I would have never been able to finish. This is not like an ad for good feet, but they're great. <laughs> um, just, you need not flat, you need something that's got an arch that can protect, I mean, it has to have a pretty good arch because that's what you need to keep your knees steady. It's a walking mission, there are no cars. There are very few biking sectors. Um, it, you will walk sometimes 10 miles a day or more, you know, so you just need to be prepared for that. And I, I had some dance goes, those like big clunky shoes that they suggest for missionaries. I wouldn't buy those either because it was so clunky that I rolled my ankle a lot and almost broke it and that's not worth it. <laughs> so just something low, like try to avoid heel as much as you can but with an arch. And since that doesn't really exist, you might need to buy arch supports. Wow. Mental health was a huge thing in my mission. Huge. Lots of people were sent home for that all the time. And as a sister training leader, I saw lots of my sisters have tons of struggles with that. Depression and anxiety. Um, it is real. It is very hard. And it can be prevented and it can be fixed. So first off, if, if, if it's too late and you find yourself in this difficulty, there is free counseling. There are an elder and sister assigned to the mission just for that. Um, you just need to talk with your president, who right now is Presidente Videla. He's from Chile. Um, and right away they will get you on that. They're wonderful. Oh my goodness. Um, so there's a handbook. It's red. I don't remember exactly what it's called. It's like stress management, something like that, that they will give you once you get there that you need to read and be aware of. But you just kind of need in these preparatory months or time that you've got right now, you need to be kind of examining yourself. What do I do when I get stressed? How can I manage my stress if I don't have music or I can't go for a run or I can't be alone? I mean, I think that's a, a big problem is that lots of times, I don't know, let's say I get really stressed out about something and at home, I can just be alone. <laughs> at home, I can just be alone by myself and just calm down, but there you can't. You need to be with your companion at all times. And sometimes your companion is the thing that's stressing you out, right? So you just need to prepare your mind for that. Be aware that it's going to get difficult, but you will have the scriptures. You will have prayer. You will have ways of coping, and um, you need to figure out what those are. Now, when it comes upon you, you need to get help. You need to speak with your companion. You need to include them in your situation or in talk to your president. 
He's not going to judge you. He's not going to like demote you. He's just going to love you. And that's what he's there for is to protect you and provide for you. And I would see sisters get anxious and want to stop working. That is not the answer. <laughs> the secret to happiness is just work. And that, I mean, that's said in Preach My Gospel several times. The secret to missionary work is work, 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 work. And just love. So if you find yourself falling into a bout of depression, just make sure you talk to somebody about it and can get the appropriate help. As missionaries, we, we were expected to eat everything that they put in front of us. I think I didn't finish my meal like twice because I, I just was practically throwing up. But I mean, sometimes they will give you giant mountains and it doesn't matter how you feel. You're not there for you. You're there for them and you will eat everything they've got. I mean, everything they give you, don't get everything they've got. But if they have made that sacrifice for you, you just need to work through it. There are some areas where there there is extreme poverty. Um, I was in a couple areas with some pretty extreme poverty, you know, like either we pay the money to take the bus to church or we don't eat today. So it's kind of, it can be hard sometimes, but there's also extreme wealth. I mean, in the city, I saw some serious wealth, <laughs> wealthier than I will ever be. <laughs> Most of transportation is the bus system, which is called the micro. Uh, la micro is the pits. <laughs> I got sick every time I rode it, which was sometimes two or three times a day. I usually didn't have to write it that much, but I was for many months in my mission, I was a sister training leader and would go around visiting with other sisters and their areas and helping them learn. And so it's, it was something daily, you know, but, but. it's safe. I mean, nothing ever happened. I, one of my companions had a Ika, they call when you're training, your trainee is called your hija, like your daughter or son, if you're an elder. And one of her hijas got robbed one time, but I, they're really safe. I mean, that was just like a one-time thing. It's really, I never felt in danger, ever, really. As a girl, I mean, we have a higher risk, obviously. The Latinos, the men are just, they really like us. They think we're just beautiful and will sometimes try and get us to go into their houses. I mean, the real issue is just being obedient. If you're going to be obedient, then you're going to be safe. You're going to be fine. If you're not, you're not. Um, I remember, I mean, daily we'd get cat calls and whistles and yells and they'd say naughty words at us. I mean, that was a daily occurrence, but it's just something that you t learn, learn to t tune out and not worry about. And if you have the spirit with you, you'll be directed to not have a problem. Well, first of all, the islands, like I mentioned before, I mean, I wouldn't want to go down there without going back to my beloved island. I'm just obsessed with that place. And I'd love to see Easter Island. They say it's beautiful. But also, besides just being the city of Santiago, it goes up more north. Our, our, our mission goes up to Los Andes, which is like the Andes Mountains with little towns. And there's ski resorts. Called, there's one called Portillo, which is supposedly beautiful. I obviously never went skiing, but... I'm the big skier. <laughs> um, I would love to do that. And in the city itself, there are there are some really cool places. There's one called um, San Cristobal, which is a hill. It's kind of like, I mean, the city is giant. And it's kind of like this giant hill in the middle of the city that has this fortress built into it. And you just climb up around it. It's cool because it's all surrounded by all these skyscrapers. Just all of a sudden there's a hill with a fortress in it. Um, what else did we do? We, we climbed up Cerro Renca, which Renca is at like a suburb of Santiago where I served for like a third of my mission. Um, 
and it's just this giant hill that's really well known and everyone climbs it. I don't know, I, th I thought it was cool. <laughs> I lived in great places. The houses I lived in were really nice, wonderful, better than what I live in here on campus. <laughs> I, there were a few that were pretty rough. Like on the island, I lived in this teeny house that we were half frozen to death. Oh, there's no heat anywhere. It's, it's, and there's no air conditioning either. So in the summer, you're sweating as you sleep and don't really sleep. And in the summer, you're freezing as you in sleep and don't really winter. sleep. Or in the winter, sorry. So, yeah. I mean, I remember, oh my goodness. Like sometimes in the winter, I'd come home just, you know, freezing and be all excited to get up in my covers and snuggle in the bed but oh no my covers are frozen <laughs> i mean they weren't really like frozen but they were just so cold that it wasn't even fun <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but Aww. there were great living conditions there were some houses yes that had like fleas and mold but the the pensionists is that a word pensionist the old people like the pension. house people yeah. housing elder and sister they were they were great about keeping things intact and yeah like chile is not a, a third world country it's it's totally normal <laughs> i mean there's there's a place called leader which is walmart um there's a place called jumbo which is like kind of a target kind of place and those aren't everywhere they're in the main city for sure i mean you can find that in the big city, but also when you go out, there's there's little like supermarket type stuff. Like I would compare it kind of to Kroger, not quite as nice, obviously, but there's one called Unimark. There's one called Montserrat. There's just there's little supermarkets where you can get stuff. But there's also on every street there will always be at least one person who has turned the front of their Oh, what's that called? Patio. It's like it's like the front of your I guess patio. patio. The front of your house. <laughs> yeah, that. Like they've turned the front of their porch into a little mini store. So you can usually people go to get their bread every night and just, you know, the basic stuff if you're needing milk or something like that. You can always find that there. Um, there's a boat that comes in once a month and brings food for the whole island. So that was pretty rough sometimes because like usually all the fruits and vegetables and things that don't last, like eggs, that would all be gone within two weeks. And so for like two weeks of the month, we'd be living off of noodles or rice or fish. I mean, that's kind of the main industry was fish. So that was kind of rough sometimes. They had a war with Argentina um, that kind of made them smaller and made them mad. But they don't really hate Argentina anymore. That's kind of that's kind of more of a joke than a real thing. But there are issues between them and Peru, and that they're still kind of fighting over boundary issues. Tons of Peruvians migrate to Chile, and the Chileans sort of have not always. Obviously, this would be kind of a stereotype, but there's a lot of hatred towards the Peruvians. So um, that's kind of, I would say that's one of the bigger political issues right now is kind of what they're going to do about that situation. I loved them. The Peruvians are wonderful. They make the best food. They're humble and wanting to change in their lives, wanting that always to be baptized and take their families to the temple. They're wonderful. <laughs>